Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll be learning about the difference between the modeling lamp and the flash unit of the strobe light. And we'll be seeing what the primary function of the modeling lamp is. And we'll also be seeing why is it not advisable to only shoot with the modeling lamp on and why is it necessary to shoot with the flash unit on with respect to ISO. So let's start. All right, so right now you can see in our camera that our modeling lamp is not really switched on and later on I'm gonna switch it on like this. But right now let's just switch it off so that we f let me first show you what exactly is the use of the modeling lamp. So you can actually do photography, studio photography without the modeling lamp on. It's not a problem at all, but there's just a small issue that comes up. So let me just show you that. So right now, if you look at the camera, we're looking at this mannequin with the modeling lamp off. And you know, you can see that I've got my transmitter, so it's connected to the strobe. Now, right now, we're using these particular settings. You know why we're using ISO 100. That's because the strobe light is strong enough. We've already seen that. Don't worry about why we're using shutter speed 1 by 200 and an f-stop number of f8. This will become clear to you in the next videos, which are just coming after this, where we'll be learning about shutter speed and aperture. But we're just concentrating on ISO. And you can see that, as I said, we've got our transmitter. So we are all ready to take the shot. And I can just focus on this mannequin and I can get a decent sh looking shot like this is not a problem. But what is the issue with the modeling lamp? Now, if I just zoom into the shot, you can see that anytime you take a shot, because of the type of lighting that you're using, the angle at which the light is, you know, you're always gonna have shadows and highlights. That is the bright parts and the opposite side will be the dark parts, which are shadows and the bright parts are highlights. So, if, and shadows are very important when you're taking a shot and so are highlights. So you need to kind of come to know before you take the shot as to where the shadows are falling on a person's face because sometimes they can look awkward, they cannot be very desirable as to which part of the person, you know, are the shadows coming on. For example, uh, let's say you're, shoot, you're using a light at an angle and, you know, it's just casting a bad looking shadow. Maybe the shadow on the nose is long or anything can go wrong like that. So if you're not using the modeling lamp, what will happen is that every time you'll have to take a shot like this and then zoom into your shot and see, you know, whether you like things or not. So you're correcting through a trial and error process. So you're moving your light or you're asking your subject to move around every time you take a shot. So won't it be better if you can just get a preview of how the shot, how the, what kind of light will the flash produce beforehand? Because remember, flash is just a one-time light, right? So it's just gonna come and you cannot get a preview beforehand. But what the modeling lamp, since it's a continuous source of light, so let me just switch it on. So I switch on the light, and now, if you see the mannequin here, if I just go here, you can see that I can come to know that, okay, the shadow, when I finally take the shot using the flash unit, the shadow is gonna be like this, and you know, this much part of the face will be in shadow. So I just get a preview of how my shot is gonna look like, and that just makes my life much easier when I'm doing studio photography. So now that my modeling lamp is on, let's say I find, okay, that this is good. If I don't find, if I don't like, you know, the composition, the way the lighting is coming on the face, I can ask my subject to move. I don't have to necessarily take the shot first. So of course I can't ask the mannequin to move, but you get the point. So let's say now I'm happy with the shot and then I can just fire away the same way. You can leave your modeling lamp on. It's not gonna affect your shot in any way. So, you know, so why not use that particular light? So it's absolutely fine to use the modeling lamp, but ultimately we've got a transmitter on. So what is producing this shot, just like the shot before, is the flash unit, right? So that is the purpose of the modeling lamp, that you get a preview of how your lighting is gonna look like. But like I told you in the video on strobes, the mistake that a lot of people make is that they don't buy the transmitter, so they don't use the flash unit to take the shot. They simply keep using the modeling lamp because you can see this also produces light on our subject. So some people like me, when I started off, just use the modeling lamp because I was like I told you, I was not even aware that all this is supposed to be triggered by a transmitter and a receiver system, right? Now, what is the problem with that approach? This is what I wanna show you in this video because we were talking about ISO, right? So what I'm gonna do is I have my modeling lamp on, like you can see here, I'm just gonna remove this transmitter. So we have no connection with the strobe right now, right? So the flash unit is not gonna fire now. All we're doing is we just have this subject, the mannequin lit by the modeling lamp, 
right? And we're using the modeling lamp as the source of light to produce our shot. And you're gonna see then that's gonna create a big problem for you. So let's see why. Now later on when you learn about shutter speed and aperture in this section, you'll find that you know, the settings will roughly, roughly remain what you're seeing here. Why, they, why this is the case, you'll learn at that time. But let's say we cannot change these settings. And now the flash unit is not firing, so we don't have that strong source of light. So what's gonna happen is, if I take the shot right now, using the modeling lamp, since the modeling lamp is not as strong as the flash unit, you can see we're getting a very dark image. That's because we're not getting enough light onto the subject because the modeling lamp is not strong and the flash unit is not firing since we don't have a transmitter, right? So what I'll have to do is, I won't be able to use ISO 100 and what I'll be forced to do is that I will be forced to increase my ISO like this. So let's see, let's try at ISO 1000. And you can see now we start getting a little, a shot which is slightly brighter, but this is also not good enough. Let's maybe try 2500 ISO. And you can see where I'm getting all, you know, with this, getting to. So you can see still not bright enough when we have, as compared to when we had fired, taken the shot with the flash unit. Let's try maybe something like ISO 4000. And now finally we start getting towards something which is giving us a shot which was as properly exposed as with the flash but maybe we need to just do it slightly more. So I think ISO 5000 should be fine, but if you know about ISO, you know what I'm getting to, and that is that if I were to zoom into this image, this is gonna have a lot of noise. You can see here, So this of course, because it's been shot on a higher ISO, is absolutely just not gonna look good at all. And let's say if you were to crop this image, do some, Editing on it won't be easy because there's too much noise and if you were to let's say do it if you were doing this shoot for a client You give them this image and they notice the noise is just not good Let's say suppose they want to get a good print out of this thing So of this shot and if it is noisy it's gonna be very very tough and they probably won't like the shot So you have to shoot your shots at a lower ISO, right? So that is the problem with the Modeling lamp and now how you can correct it is simply don't rely on the modeling lamp Put your transmitter on connect your stroke to the camera so that we can fire the flash unit. Now I can easily dial back to ISO 100, that's because I don't, I have a very strong flashlight with me. Let the modeling lamp do its job, which is just to see the preview of how your highlights and shadows will look on your subject, and then just take a shot, and you can see I'll get the same shot at ISO 100, and you can see I, if I zoom in to this shot, there's absolutely no noise, this is absolutely crystal clear, and we don't have any problems. So this is the correct way of doing things. Now. It's okay if you wanna use the morning lamp sometimes because a lot of people these days argue that, you know, cameras are getting better and even if I use a higher ISO, it's okay because my camera is not gonna to generate too much noise. Yes, those arguments are fairly correct, but the point is why do it when it's so simple to just put a transmitter on and shoot at ISO 100? Because remember, nothing will beat shooting at a lower ISO because there's a lot of times where you might have to stretch those pixels and that's the time where ISO 100 or a lower ISO really shows its strength. But I just want to demonstrate here to you how the modeling lamp is, what its true purpose is, and what you should and what you should not do, and what is the correct and the incorrect way to use a strobe light. So I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one where we'll be continuing with the settings, and I'll see you there. Bye for now.